I'd like you to just lift your hands to the Almighty God and just worship Him. You are who you are yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you say is what you do. You never fail, you never change. You are faithful to me. Faithful God, I worship you. Let's start again. You're who you are. You're who you are. Who you are yesterday. you have been trusting God for in the last three and a half years. The Lord asked me to tell you that within this month and next month, I will perfect it for performance. There is a family here. There's a similar stagnation, similar stagnation in the life of the five children. The life of the five children. The Lord asked me to tell you the yoke is broken now. There is a woman here. You had a dream of recent in which the hair of your head was shaped. And since that time, there's hardly anything you ever were able to go into. Shame always happened to you. Shame always happened to you. The Lord asked me to tell you, he said, your hair has grown again. He said, I've taken away the shame. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There is someone here. God asked me to tell you. He said, the same place where you were disgraced you will be accepted in honor and glory. Father, we worship you. We exalt you for who you are. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for throne room. Thank you for your presence, your power, your glory, your name, your blood that is here. We say be exalted in the name of Jesus. Through the instrument of your word and your presence, you will bless us again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. Jesus mighty name we will pray a louder and a better amen please be seated throne room God bless you I'd like you to appreciate God in your life as you take your seat with a clap offering I count it a big honor to be here and the Lord God Almighty who has brought us to his presence will bless us and make it bless us massively in the name of Jesus the team we are running with which I saw on the screen is no shaking amen so permit me to say, no shaking lines in pleasant places. I say no shaking lines in pleasant places. Psalm 16, verse number 6. Psalm 16, verse number 6 says, The boundary lines are falling for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. Another version says, The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. 
When you hear the word boundary, what comes to your mind is limitations. What comes to your mind is that you can't go beyond this level. But God is saying that every boundary that the enemy has placed before you, not only will they be lifted, that at such places you will encounter breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Can you raise your right hand to God and say, Father? Make it louder than that, Father. Every boundary lying around me, turn them to a place of pleasant surprises. Can you pray that prayer for a second? Every boundary lines around my life, around my career, my business, my home, Lord, turn them to places of pleasant surprises. Places of pleasant surprises. Places of pleasant surprises. It is so for you in Jesus' name. Now that verse gives several meanings which are applicable in practical terms in our life. Number one, it means blessings that is far from me came to me. Blessings that is far from me came to me. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 4 says, Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons from afar and your daughters are carried on the heap. Now, chapter 49 of the same Isaiah, verse 22, put it this way. This is what the Lord God says. See, I will lift my hand to signal the nations. Because when you get to boundaries, you see another nation. Is that not so? Is that not so? So when you get to those, but God now says, I will get to those boundaries with you, and then I will now signal to nations. I will raise my banner for all the people to see. Then they will bring your sons back to you in their arms, and they will carry your daughters on their shoulders. I pray for you again from afar, from near, greatness will come your way in Jesus' name. I say greatness will come your way in the name of Jesus. Now, if you align this scripture with the work of creation of God over man's life, then you will understand this trend. In Genesis 1, verse 1 to 24, God made all things. In Genesis 1, 26 and 27, God made you and I. And then in verse 28, he blessed us. And then in verse 29, he gave us instructions that are needed for our destiny greatness. And it was not until Genesis 2, verse 8 downwards, that he placed man in the garden. What am I saying? The essence of all we need was already made. The blessings that we need to work with was already provided. There were physical blessings, and then there were now audible pronounced blessings before man was not given work to do. It is not your career that makes you prosperous. It is the aura of the blessing your career is sitting on that makes you prosperous. Are you listening to me? God had blessed man before giving him work. So the work of man is meant to ride on the wings of pronounced blessings, which will now produce the physical blessings. Can you raise up your two hands to God? You use them to work, so you need to raise your two hands to God. Say, Father, according to the order of creation, let your pronounced blessings be over and below my entire career and duties. Can you pray that prayer for a second? Pray it with understanding. Pray it from your heart. Pray it deeply. Pray it deeply. Pray it deeply. Father, let your pronounced blessings in Genesis 1 verse number 28. And God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. Lord, let the grace, the power of fruitfulness, the grace, the power of blessings be at the foundation of my career. I lay my business on your pronounced declarations. I lay, I lay my business, I lay my career, I lay my home, I lay my marriage, I lay my relationship on it in the name of Jesus. I lay it on them, I lay it on them, and I command the fivefold unusual dimension of your pronounced blessings to overshadow everything I do. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So I receive it. Again, it means privileges that is higher than me became my portion, just as God did for Solomon. There were sons of David that were clamoring to be king. One or two even tried it. Solomon did not make any efforts. All because why? God said to David, Solomon will be the one that will be king. David said to the mother of Solomon and to the priest, this is what God will do. So when the day finally came, 
It just only took two people to remind the king the promise he made according to divine instruction and he aligned to it. As you remind God his promises over your life this morning, you will raise men who will work it out for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say better amen. amen. Say better amen. amen. Say better amen. amen. Again, it means what is meant to be the privilege of few became mine. You know yourself, I know myself. Hey, Pastor Emma was leading us to pray. He mentioned how the villages of some of us look like. But not minding your background, God set you up for things unusual. So, what is, so sometime, or many times or all times, God allows you to have a background that does not befit the future. So that when he does what he needs to do, you will know that God is one at work. I decree upon your life a glory far, 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 far better than your background over your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Say it better, amen. amen. Say it better, amen. amen. Daniel entered Babylon as a slave, but in that same place, he became a, he became a ruler. He, be, he, was, he, he led a occupied leadership position for 70 years. He saw the reign of four different kings, four different kings, and he was never displaced. I'd like to say to some of us here, government come, government change. You will not be irrelevant. Amen. Say better, amen. amen. Say better, amen. amen. Say better, amen. amen. It also means what I could not reach out to fell to me by favor. Confirmed by Psalm 5, verse number 12. It also means divine access to what could have not been mine, just as God did for the man called Jacob. Which is where I want to speak a little bit more. If you have studied the scripture, you will observe that when God was talking about Esau and Jacob, at the beginning of their life, the scripture says that they were two in the womb, and then it confirmed that they were growing, that they were growing. Now, after a while, when they were born, and things began to change, the only person that God talked about that grew was this man called Jacob. The name Esau was not mentioned again at all. Several things happened. You know, Esau sold his bad trite, despised it, and the rest like that. Why Jacob took advantages of the things and the people that God placed around him. Even God said, I love Jacob, Esau I hated. And several other things like that. Things worked for him. But the, the, the part of Esau that interests me was that when he lost the bad trite, he realized that he lost his bad trite. And he cried to the same father who was meant to bless him. And the father gave a decree that will help him. He said, when you are tired of the yoke of your brother, he said, you will break loose. Are we listening to me? He said, you will break loose. And then we were not told how he prevailed in prayer. But we were told later on when he had to meet his brother, things had changed. Things had changed for him. And he came with 400 bodyguards. And anybody who has 400 bodyguards in this nation? I don't know whether the president has access to 400 bodyguards. Those of us in the presidency will know that. He's not a small person. Is that not so? That when he now met his brother, his brother wanted to give him gift again. He had overcome it. He said, no, I have more than enough. Now, what does God ask me to tell you today, in brief? When you say no shaking lies in pleasant places, it means that it is time for God's divine counsel to prevail. Can I hear amen to that? Amen. Follow me. Genesis 25, 23. The Bible says, the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two people from within you will be separated. One will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Now, when you now get down again to Exodus 23, 25, the Bible says, worship the Lord your God, and his blessings will be on your food and on your water. I will take sickness away from the midst of you. This now applies to you. Now, God already spoke the power of growth on these two boys when they were in the womb. If only you could remember, maybe your mom told you, your dad told you that when you were in the womb, there were pronounced blessings that already rested upon you. For example, my first child, I remember very well, her name, Adeogo, she already began to bear that name when she was three months in her mother's womb. Because God told me that to be her name, so I will call her that name. And each time I call her that name, she responds. She responds. So when she was born and she got that name, for her, she got to know her name when she was born. 
but the name has preceded Abat. Lift up your hand as I pray for you. Every glory that preceded your conception and your birth that is here to materialize. As you echo amen, I command them to begin to come to pass. So the counsel of God, the Bible says, is superior. And it lasts through generations. Number two, apart from the counsel of God, like I said, that also makes things possible, is the power of growth, which I have explained to you just a few seconds ago. Genesis 25, 27. So the boys grew. The boys grew. The boys grew. But when you get to Genesis 30, verse 14, the Bible says, in this way, the man grew. Not men now. He mentioned boys, he was supposed to mention men, but he mentioned man. The man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large stocks and farmlands, referring only to Jacob. No matter how many are contending for that location with you, that blessings with you, the aura of Jacob, I command it to rest on you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number three factor that worked for this man, Jacob, is the love of God. The love of God. Romans 9.13 says, just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Esau I hated. Malachi chapter 1 also confirms that. Say, the Lord spoke his word to Israel to Malachi, verse 2. I love you, I loved you, says the Lord, but you ask, how did you love us? Wasn't Esau, wasn't Esau Jacob's brother, declared the Lord, I loved Jacob. Now, when the love of God is upon your life, a thread can be sustained. Indignation can't last. People these days use the power of hatred to destroy other people. In offices, in organizations, and the rest. But when the love of God is upon your life, it can't perform his enterprise. The Bible says the imaginations of the wicked will not come to pass. Lift up your hand as I pray for you. Every imagination of the wicked against your level, against your life, against your career, against your business, against your position, against your promotion, I command them to crumble before your eyes. The fourth thing that worked for this man was that God renamed him. God renamed him. As a matter of fact, do you know Jacob was christened twice? He was christened twice. Number one time by the mouth of an angel. When he had an encounter in Genesis 32, verse 28, he said, your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, from now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and you have won. Directly from the mouth of God in Genesis 35. Then God appeared once again more to Jacob after he came back from Padan Aram. That's verse 9. Then God said to him, your name is Jacob. You will no longer be called Jacob, but your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. Once has he spoken? Twice have I heard. Twice have I heard. Any name, situations, circumstances has given you, that is bringing shame and disgrace. This morning, I stand to Christine you twice. By angelic force ministration, I decree your name change for good. By the hands of the almighty God, I decree your name change for the best. The fifth thing that worked for him was parental love. Parental love. Genesis 25, verse 28. Isaac loved Esau because he enjoyed eating his wild game. Esau brought him. But Rebekah loved Esau. Jacob. Why? It wasn't stated. When the reason for your love is not mentioned, then it is selfless. Are you listening to me? Rebecca's love for Jacob is the kind of love that God has for you and I. For God so loved the world that he gave. What manner of love the Father has towards us? What manner of love he has towards us? Now, there's one word I used to alternate love. is the word sacrifice. You can go any far. Rebecca loved this guy so much that when he was hesitating to go and take the blessing, and then he said, what if my father cursed me? He said, let the curse be upon me. Wasn't Jesus? Didn't he take your place on the tree? He became cursed on the tree just for you and I. Is that not so? So as Rebecca was showing that God kind of love, God was saying, my counsel must stand. My counsel must stand. My counsel must stand. When she said again that, let the cause be upon me, God said, oh, Jesus was touched at that point in time because he knew he was going to come in the future to come and carry our cause on his own head. He said, ah! This woman is like me. 
the cancel must stand. So there was no way that Jacob could lose the blessing. No way. Have you despised parents that are in your life? Reconcile. Reconcile. Oh. Please reconcile. Please reconcile. And also there are spiritual parents in your life. People that God has brought your way. That either by phone call, I'm sure most times when you call Pastor Tunde or you call Pastor Iman, the first thing you hear is God bless you. Prophetic words will come. They will ask you, how are you feeling this part of your life? And when you tell them, the next thing they will flow into is prayer. It's correcting so many things in your life. Those are Rebekahs that God plants in your life. Lift up your hand again and say, Father, every Rebekah, you are planted for my life. Let them show to help me. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Let them show up to help me. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Say it better, amen. Say it better, amen. Another thing that worked for this man, Jacob, was the fact that he had lines of privileged special encounters. I went through scriptures, and I saw five. Maybe there are more, but I saw five. He had an encounter at Bethel in Genesis 28, 13 to 15, which, turned, which changed his journey in life. In all your journeys, you say that you start with God or you stop on the way and wait for God to catch up with you before you continue. Every journey of life that, does not, that is not resting on an encounter with God is a journey in futility. Every of your aspirations, several of us are in Abuja today because you felt there is fortune for me there. If God did not follow you, carry God to this place. Oh. Like Moses said, if you don't follow us, we will not go from here. God was involved. Besides, as a matter of fact, it was Jacob that named that place better. And his children followed stood. In Genesis 31, he had an, another encounter where he was told to return. Also, number three encounter was, was when he also struggled again. That was Genesis 32, 26 to 28. And then he had an encounter of dedication in Genesis 35, reading from verse 1. And several things began to happen in his life. Every time he was entering into a new phase, they were unique encounters. Do you know that demons... Witches and wizards go to have an encounter before they come to confront you. Before they come to attack you. They go to have an encounter with demons higher than them, with the devil himself, before they want, before they get man like so that's why you too you must have an encounter with God regularly before you enter into any new phase or before you go into any new major projects. Are you vying for a particular project? Do the compilation, vet it, bring it before God. Bring it before God. I've seen documents, people looking at documents and seeing acceptance without seeing the face of the fellow who owns the documents. Why? Because the hand of God rested on it. I've seen people appear in places where they were looking for an appointment and the rest, and others have gone ahead of them when it was their turn. Everybody that went ahead was cancelled. And when this fellow came in, they didn't ask him questions about that. He just said, We like your face. This project is yours. Come and start. And the fellow was looking. Are they talking to somebody behind me or not? When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion around, the Bible said we were like them that dream dreams. This year, miracle that will make you like a dreamer, multiple of it will happen to you in the name of Jesus. Will happen to you in the name of Jesus. Two more points and then we'll go to pray. This man did personal sacrifices. Every place of encounter, he raised something there. Obedience to his mother's instruction is even sacrifice. Are you ready to be a son and a daughter of sacrifice this year? Are you ready to ensure that you are consistent in your tithing? 10%. A good number of you should have gone beyond 10%. 10% is the law. There are people who give God 40%, 50%, 90%. And tell God, let me keep the tight. You keep the main one. And their 10% is more than what millions have. Psalm 24, verse 1, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He owns everything. Your ability to release to God shows that you acknowledge that he owns everything. And God who owns everything, put everything under your shoulder, under you, and under your feet for you to reign over. And lastly, this man was a man of gratitude. The pastor was leading us to pray. He mentioned gratitude. How do I know? In Genesis 27, verse 20, 
Isaac said to his son, how is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? What was his response? He said, your God, the Lord your God brought it to me. He didn't begin to say, my mommy helped me. Who have you been giving the glory of every event of your life to? Most of us, we give it to ourselves. Ah, I worked out for it. I'm smart, too. I dazzled them at the panel. Hi, hi, hi. It's a statement of an ungrateful person. And ingratitude is a major limitation of breakthrough. Because God knows you will not thank him. He will leave you alone. He will leave you alone. Are you ready to be grateful to God this year? Then you will see amazing things in your life. Amazing things. I'd like to show you something. Pastor. Please. I'd like to show you something very quickly. That will help you to go through this. Are you ready to go through this year? Are you ready for God? Are you sure? Are you sure? Rise on your feet. Let's do something very quickly. Say, Father. Loud and better. Father. Loud and better. Father. This year, every aspect of my life, let it be about your divine cancer. Can you pray that prayer for a second? Can you pray that prayer for a second? Can you pray that prayer for a second? In Jesus' name, we'll pray. Number two, pray up and say, Father, let your blessings precede my efforts. Can you pray in the name of Jesus? Can you pray in the name of Jesus? Can you pray in the name of Jesus? In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Say, Father, I will be grateful to you. Help me all through this year. Can you pray in the name of Jesus Christ? I will be grateful. I will be grateful. I will be grateful. I will give the glory of all my effort to you. I will give the glory of all my endeavors to you. I will acknowledge you as the one who is doing it. I will thank you for every project that comes my way. I will thank you for every idea that comes up my mind. I will thank you for every paper I'm able to write. I will thank you for every, for every project I'm able to execute. I will thank you, Lord. I will thank you, Lord. I will thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Lift up your two hands and say, Father, I will rest on your leading. I will depend on you. I will trust in you. Can you pray that prayer for a second in the name of Jesus? Can you pray it? 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. There's one principle I'd like you to walk through this year in your life with, which I'm about to show you, and then you're going to pray. Can you put him down? Because he's learning to walk. Just put him down. Just put him down and hold the other hand. I hold one hand, you hold the other hand. Now, we are two adults, is that not so? Are you following me? Who do we have in our middle? Huh? Who do we have in our middle? A child. What does God call you? What does God call you? Remember when the disciples were clamoring to sit on his right and on his left, he told them that he couldn't give them that privilege. But when children came out, what, what did he say? He said, suffer not. They brought them close. So God is looking for children this morning. Now, this child is learning to walk his hand also. His hand also. But when we hold his hands and then we move, what happens? What happens? Is he moving? Who is he resting on? What is he resting on in us? What is he resting on in us? Our strength. Is that not so? Is that not so? But the fact is that he's working. Is that not so? He's working, is he not? He's working, is he not? Are you going to rest on God's strength this year? So you can be able to walk. There are limitations that can stop you. But if you are ready to lean on God this year, you, every step you take will take you higher in life. Carry him, carry him. Every move you make will move you forward. People are waiting to capitalize on your limitations. But can you rest on God and say, God, I depend on your strength? Can you say, God, my trust is in you and not in myself? Can you rest on his wisdom? Rest on his grace? Rest on his power? Can you rest on God? Can you rest? Can you rest? Can you rest? Can you rest? Tell him, Father, I rest on you. I depend 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 on you.
I depend on you. Lord, I depend on you this year. In my career work, in my business work, I depend on you. In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Now look at the other side. Pastor Ima, please come. Let's do this together. Let's walk. Are we leaning on each other? Are we? Why? He can walk. I can walk. He doesn't need me to walk. Is that not so? But he needs God to be able to walk in this life. So we all, two of us, need to come down. Lose our strength. Put our hands in God and relax. Are you listening to me? Most times it's when we are strong or when we are sick that we rely on another fellow's strength. Do you know God allows some things in nature to teach you real life principles? When you are sick, another word for sickness is lack of strength. Is that not so? If you only will say, God, I put off my own strength. Sir, sorry to bother you. I rely on you, on your strength. Then you will see unusual manifestations. Then you will be able to say, no shaking. Lies in pleasant places. Why? I am not resting on my wisdom. I'm resting on the wisdom of the ages. I am not resting on my capacity and ability. I'm resting on, on the one who is able to do all things at all times. Lift up your two hands again and say, Father, I rest on you. Go ahead and pray that prayer for a second in the name of Jesus. Pray it, 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 pray it. Take that song. I depend on you. I depend on you. I depend on you, Jesus. Take that song of confession. I depend on you. You have helped me in the past. You, you will help me again. You have helped me in the past. You will help me again. I depend on you. I depend on you. I depend on you, Jesus. I depend on you. You have helped me in the past. You will help me again. You have helped me in the past. You will help me again. Oh, Jesus, I depend on you. Lift up your two hands to God as I pray for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I decree upon your life today the help of God that is superior to the assistance of men work for you in the name of Jesus. Every situation that looks unsurmountable in the past previous years, on the platter of gold and ease, you will ride over them in the name of Jesus. All those areas of your life where there are stagnant and stubborn issues, I command they will become the easiest point of victories in the name of Jesus. This year, beginning from this morning, all round progress is your portion in the name of Jesus. All round enlargement is your portion in the name of Jesus. All round increase is your portion in the name of Jesus. All round blessings are your portion in the name of Jesus. Open up your two hands as I decree. I ask of God that every of your businesses and career that your hands touch on daily basis. From today, your hands become miracle hands in the name of Jesus. No good thing will die in your hands again in the name of Jesus. Business will not die in your hands again. Career will not die in your hands again. Opportunities will not die in your hands again. In the name of Jesus. Every step you take will take you forward in life. No good thing will die in your life. 
you will be fruitful in the name of Jesus. You are enlarged in the name of Jesus. You are prospered in the name of Jesus. And your blessings shall be many. I decree your testimonies shall be more than your prayer request. Your testimony shall be more than your prayer request. Your testimony shall be more than your prayer request. Thank you, Father. Jesus, mighty name, we we'll pray. All eyes closed. You are here this morning. You are saying, Lord, I want to surrender to you. Or you are here, you are back. that you want to come back to God. Allow me to pray for you. Can you kindly raise your right hand wherever you are so that we can pray? You don't need to miss any of these blessings because of sin. Raising your hand, can you raise it very well for the Lord to see you? God bless you. Please, can you take a step of faith and come to the altar? Raise your hand, please come. You're raising your hand, please come very quickly. You're raising your hand, please come very quickly. Don't be shy. God is here. Please come. Please come. Please come. Thank you, Father. Come close. Heavenly Father, I lay my hands on this, your son and daughters. I ask Lord God Almighty that the blessings of redemption, the blessings of restoration, and the blessings of restitutions, the blessings of miracles never thought could happen, rest upon your head in Jesus' name. Anoint their head with all Lord God Almighty, and let favor find them, and let them find favor. Make Christian giants out of these ones, and may they never go back again. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Welcome to the family. Now, I'd like you to say to three persons as I drop the microphone. I'd like you to say to three persons. How many persons? How many? You will say to them, I will hear your testimony. You will see my own. I will hear your testimony. You will see my own. Pastor Ima, I will hear your testimony. You will see my own. Thank you.